Lord Martin Rees is our guest today. He has been the president of the Royal Society, emeritus professor at the University of Cambridge, and he is the Astronomer Royal. I'm going to ask him what he thinks the future of the future might look like. This century is special. It's the first in the 45 million centuries of Earth's history when one species, namely ours, has the future of the planet in its hands. And that's for a number of reasons. First, there are more of us. The world population is 7.7 billion and we're all more demanding of energy resources, putting pressure on the environment and the climate. That's well known. We're also more interconnected, which means that uh, um, a pandemic or panic and rumor can spread around the world very quickly. But also we're empowered by technology, which can be used for good, but also has downsides and means that even a few people can in principle cause a damage that can cascade globally. So uh, the stakes are higher because technology is more powerful and can affect us for good and for ill. Do you think the experience of COVID has changed how we view risk, how we view existential risk? We should not say that this pandemic is um, unexpected. There's an important maxim that the unfamiliar is not the same as the improbable. And although this event was unprecedented in uh, modern experience, um, uh, I think no one would have said that it was unlikely. It has perhaps made us realize that there are some features of our traditional modern life uh, which we should try hard to change. I think uh, uh, what's happened during the lockdown, which we've had in your country and mine, um, is that um, uh, uh, life has been... Uh, more or less okay for those who can work from home and have comfortable homes. But it's been anything but okay for uh, essential workers who've had to work and those who are out of a job and those who are cooped up in very cramped apartments and uh, have children with them. So it's been very bad for some people. So it's amplified inequalities. And I think um, also it has made us realize that perhaps we don't need to uh, commute to work five days a week. We don't need to travel as much as we did in the past. And so it could, if we are wise, trigger an accelerated change towards a more ecologically favorable style of life. Do you think we are wise? N not at all. It's true that we are better off on average than our forebears in the Middle Ages were. We live longer, we're healthier, etc., through technology. But... I don't think we can claim any ethical progress because things were pretty rotten in the Middle Ages, obviously, worse than today. But there wasn't very much they could do about it. The gap between the way things were and the way they could have been was not enormous. Whereas now it is enormous. We have a world where the richest 2,000 people could double the income of the bottom billion. We have a world with huge inequalities, not only within countries, but between countries and continents. And so the gap between the way the world is and the way it could be is much wider than in the past. And that's, I think, an ethical indictment of our society. As you look into the future, what are you most afraid of? I think what I'm most afraid of is misuse of biotech. It's been possible for nearly 10 years to engineer the influenza virus to make it more virulent and more transmissible. And that's not yet possible for the coronavirus, but it probably will be. And I think we will have the ability to engineer even more deadly viruses than arise naturally. So what worries me very much is how we can cope with a world in which technology empowers people with evil intent to cause a catastrophe that could cascade globally. And I think it's going to be a growing tension between three things we want to value. One is uh, uh, freedom, the other security, and the other is privacy. But I think we're going to have to have a trade-off, otherwise we're at risk. Uh, as I put it, the global village will have its village idiots, but they will now have a global range. As you look towards the future, what is it that gives you hope? I think the upside of new technologies, com communications, and also uh, medical advances, which have um, doubled life expectancy. And of course, modern development in biology and plant science should allow us to feed 
the entire world and also technology could enable us if we are sufficiently motivated to get all our energy uh, by carbon free sources etc so i think uh, technology is going to be essential so i think that's why we can be optimistic and that's why i say that we've got to ensure that uh, um, we don't have uh, um, the ethical failure which allows such a big gap to grow between the way the world could be and the way it is